Why is Newell brand stock price down 44% in the last year? Sharpies, Elmer's glue, Rubbermaid containers, Expo markers, and Yankee Candle. These are all household names owned by Newell Brands. With these named brands and a 7.4% dividend yield, we're analyzing Newell Brands stock ticker NWL to learn why. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for Newell Brands. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Newell Brands for your portfolio. Newell Brands currently trades for $12.19 per share. In the last year, their stock price is down 44%. Over the past five years, their stock price is down 52%. This is down 14% compounded annually. In the last 10 years, their stock price is down 55%. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last 18 years, Newell Brands stock price is down 45%. They're declining at a rate of 3% annually. Their average dividend yield is in addition to these compounded annual returns in their stock price. Currently, the business business pays out a very large 7.4% dividend yield, well above the dividend yield of an S&P 500 ETF. Newell Brands is only a dollar above their 52-week low. The company has been cut in half from their 52-week high. 6% of their shares outstanding are sold short, and Newell Brands has a $5.1 billion market cap with an $11 billion total enterprise value. Learning more about the business, Newell Brands Inc. is an American global consumer goods company. The business activities of the group function through five segments, commercial solutions, home appliances, home solutions, learning and development, and outdoor and recreation. The learning and development segment generates most of the revenue for the firm, which offers baby gear and infant care products, writing instruments, including markers and highlighters, pens and pencils, art products, activity-based adhesive and cutting products, and labeling solution. Newell Brands was founded in 1903 and is based in Atlanta, Georgia. Starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. There are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and these business returns will be captured here by return on capital. The second is the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. By asking for a benchmark of 14% or higher, we can build in some margin of safety for ourselves here by looking for businesses that are about twice as good as average. Newell Brands has increased their return on capital throughout this time. The company earned about 8% returns on capital in their most recent fiscal year year. Averaged out over these last five years, the company earns about an 8% return on capital as well. While that's slightly above average, that's down from the benchmark we were looking for, meaning that this is an X on metric number one for Newell Brands. Next, metric number two, we're taking a high-level overview of the growth of their business. We're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these will be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. Newell Brands saw their revenues decline by 7% throughout this time frame. The company's net incomes are technically up. The company had a massive $8.3 billion write-down in 2018, which was 28% of their invested capital at the time. This was because of the company's failed acquisition of Jardin Corporation, which they paid $15 billion for in 2016 and ultimately destroyed value for shareholders. Their free cash flows are down in these last five years with changes to their accounts payable and changes in their other net operating assets that led to negative free cash flow for the business in their most recent fiscal year. With their revenues and free cash flows declining, this is an X on metric number two for the business. Metric number three, here we're looking for earnings per share growth over the past five years. Newell's earnings per share were massively negative because they're right down in 2018. Over this time frame, their earnings have grown and the company has bought back 12% of their shares outstanding. It's potentially a strong sign for long-term shareholders in the business. When you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. So when a company buys back shares by decreasing the number of shares that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business without you having to spend a dime. It's almost as if the company is making a partial acquisition of itself. Just like with any other acquisition, we want the business to be getting more value than the price that they're paying. This will depend on a number of factors, including the price that these buybacks were occurring and what a potential fair value is for the business, which thankfully when we perform our discounted cash flow analysis, we'll come to an estimate of that for Newell Brands today. 
Because of their earnings growth and their share buybacks, this is a check on metric number three, our first check of the day. Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the past five years for Newell. Due to the changes in accounts payable and their change in their other net operating assets, their free cash flows are negative in their most recent fiscal year. Even with these share buybacks, this is an X here on metric number four. Recapping where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we only have one check for Newell Brands. Metric number five, we're evaluating how the business is using debt. We don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses. During economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over their last five years. Newell Brands currently has $5.8 billion of net debt, and during this time frame when we add all of their free cash flow together, the company has produced about $2.3 billion in free cash flow, so this is coming in at less than half of their current net debt position, meaning that this is an X on metric number five for the business. It looks like Newell Brands is using more debt than their free cash flows are able to support. Again, the company had these changes in their cash flow statement in their most recent fiscal year, so that likely plays a role here. However, it does look like the company is using a high amount of leverage regardless. Metric number six, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their enterprise value yield to be above the yield of the 10-year treasury. If this is the case, that will give us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury, and it will potentially offer a reasonable starting spot for a fair value of Newell Brands. We're using their total enterprise value, which is about $11 billion currently, because it takes into account both their net debt and their market cap. It gives us a perspective of the company that's more similar to as if Newell Brands were a private company. As we learned, the business produced $2.3 billion in free cash flow over their last five fiscal years meaning that in an average year, the business produces about $450 million in cash flow. So when we divide their $450 million of their average free cash flow by their $11 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 4.1% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Again, the business had negative free cash flows in their most recent fiscal years, meaning they have a negative current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. While on average here, this is slightly above the yield of the 10-year treasury, that's below that 5% risk premium we'd be seeking. And so this is an X on metric number six for Newell Brands. Just because this is the case doesn't mean that you're going to toss this business out. This is one of our six metrics and it's not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. You'll want to stick around for when we perform that discounted cash flow analysis and when we ultimately come to a final rating for the business. In the meantime, we can't forget about our bonus metric. As our bonus here, we're looking at Newell Brands dividend profile. Newell Brands currently pays out a 7.4% dividend yield, which is massively above the dividend yield from an S&P 500 ETF. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends, so it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business to determine if they're able to support their dividend or not. We want Newell Brands to support their dividend using their cash flows, and the company has done that in three of these past five fiscal years. With the business having negative free cash flows in their most recent fiscal 2022, they have not supported their dividend payouts, so the business would need to turn their free cash flows around in order to have a sustainable dividend. Even with their share buybacks, the company has kept their dividend payouts per share the same throughout the past five years. Keep in mind that this is a snapshot of their last five years of performance, and it's no guarantee for the future. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Newell Brands, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for Newell Brands. A discounted cash flow model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. It's just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs will be sensitive to its inputs. Here we're starting with an average of Newell Brands free cash flows over their last five years to give us a more normalized perspective of the company's earning ability. Then we're using historical growth assumptions to project these out into the future. It's it's up to you to do your own homework to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions will be accurate and applicable going forward for the business to give us this baseline projected estimate. If we assume that the company keeps their average free cash flows flat for the next 10 years, and then during the 10 years out from there that these free cash flows decline at a rate of 2% annually, we won't be adding in the company's tangible book value because that's skewed based off how the accounting is done for their share buybacks. If we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is looking for from his investments, in addition to his margin of safety or requirements then it looks like at today's valuations of Newell Brands that a potential fair value for the company is only around $6.50 per share. There are some important factors to keep in mind here. Newell Brands has had a low degree of business predictability in its past, so this may also be the case going forward for the company. This potentially makes these results less accurate for the business. 
Another thing to be mindful of is that this 15% rate of return includes their dividend yield. Nearly half of this 15% rate of return would be coming from their dividend yield currently, so we would not be doubly counting their dividends. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. Now we have to answer the big question. What's our final rating for Newell Brands? In analyzing Newell Brands stock ticker symbol NWL, we learned that the business earns slightly above average returns on capital of about 8%. Their revenues and their free cash flows are down over the last five years, and their net incomes are up. Although in their 2018, they had an $8 billion write down. The company has bought back 12% of their shares outstanding in the last five years, but it looks like they're using a lot of debt relative to their free cash flows. Even though their average free cash flow to their enterprise value yield is slightly above the yield of the 10-year treasury, it's below the risk premium we were looking for, and their current yield is negative. The company has supported their above average dividend yield in three of the past five years, but not in their most recent fiscal year with their negative of cash flows, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Newell Brands. If you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions will be accurate and applicable going forward for the company, then from today's valuations, if you are seeking a 15% rate of return, it looks like a fair value for Newell Brands is just around $6.50. The last time the company traded at those levels was during the global financial crisis back in spring of 2009. Again, Newell Brands has had low business predictability in its past, so that's why this may not be as accurate as it would be for some other types of companies. It's worth reiterating that this analysis is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security, it's not financial advice, and please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals before making any investment decision. When we combine all of the factors in our analysis, it looks like Newell Brands is a weak candidate for further research, as the business didn't fare that well on either our select six analysis or our discounted cash flow analysis. Please don't let that discourage you from looking into this business if you're interested in the company. Newell still has a bunch of household name brands, and there are still ways this could be a potentially interesting business. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what company you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Newell Brands with me, and have a great day.